So when you open the package, uh, you'll find some pieces of paper, some wires, and a box. And in the box are the micro bits. There should be two micro bits and some instruction leaflets. The micro bits come in these little packages. It's supposed to be anti-static, but it doesn't really matter. So there'll be two micro bits. Um, the battery packs for the micro bits. Some electronic components. Wires to connect the micro bits to a computer. And some batteries. So, what's inside the packages? Well, let's take the micro bit out. Um, they're a circuit board. They're, they're reasonably robust. They're designed for children, but they should be treated with uh, care and respect. Um, batteries. The micro bit needs power to run it. So we've got a couple of uh, AAA batteries and a little power pack. And the, the battery just go in the power pack. The power pack then connects to the micro bit. Now this is probably a, a weak point in its design. This connection here is not very strong and it connects into, it can only go the right way around so there's a little ridge on there and a groove in there so it has to go that way. But the big problem really comes when children disconnect it. They tend to pull on the wires, that pulls them out of the plug, leaves the plug in there. They actually have to be gripped by the plug and pulled out. Now what I tend to do is hand them out, if the children are going to need power, uh, hand them out with the power supply connected, collect them in with the power supply connected and then I make sure that they're removed properly. Okay? Um, so that provides power to the micro bit, but you don't always need to use the power supply. The micro bit is programmed using a computer, it could be any computer, and so the computer will provide power for the micro bit. So um, that's really only if you want to do portable things with a micro bit. The cable is a USB to micro USB and so this can only go one way round in the micro bit and then that goes into the computer. So now that's connected to the computer um, for coding and for downloading the code to the micro bit and also to provide power. If you download some code to the micro bit you can then disconnect that and as long as you've got power from your power supply the code will run and you can walk around the micro bit and use it as a portable device. Okay, anything else? Um, so that's the basics of getting started. So when you buy micro bits, they come like this. But if I'm using them with children, then uh, I like to put a case on them. Uh, just helps to protect them. They'll last a little bit longer. Cases, you can get various cases for the micro bit. Um, these ones you just bolt on and they cost about two pounds, three pounds. When using micro bits with a class, probably the biggest issue is getting all the equipment handed out at the start of the lesson and collected in at the end of the lesson. So if you keep your micro bits organized in a drawer like this, um, these drawers have a foam insert which you can buy by the same, from the same people who make the drawers, these are grapnel drawers, and you just simply push out squares to create a hole. So what I've done is I've customized the foam insert to match my 16 micro bits, 16 connection cables and 16 power supplies. So uh, I can give this to a child to go around and hand out. When I collect them in at the end of the lesson, it's very easy to see if you've got all, all your micro bits back. You don't even have to count them. If there's a hole in the drawer, then there's a micro bit missing or a power supply or a cable. Um, and this also protects them because they're, everything's kept separately. It reduces wear and tear. So it's a, it's a very safe and secure way of storing your components. To keep the micro bit very small, there's no keyboard or mouse or screen. I suppose the little array of LEDs could be a sort of screen. Um, but 
to keep it really small, programs are written on an, another computer using a block code editor. It's a little bit like Scratch, so this is code written used using the make code editor for the micro bit. And if you just Google make code, make code, then it'll bring up this link as the first link, so let's follow that link, and that takes us to the make code editor. Okay, designed for the micro bit, and it was designed for children coding for the micro bit. And I think it was inspired by Scratch. If you look at this, it looks very much like Scratch block code. Um, and so we want a new project, so we click on new project, and it's always important that the children give the project a name that means something to them. They might, might want to use their name in the, in the project's name, or if it's a project that does a particular thing, they might need to describe what it does. So it could be a um, temperature sensor. So we could call it temp sense. Something like that, just so that they remember which code is which. They'll cr they may create loads and loads of scripts, and if they don't name them as something that uh, they recognize, they'll never find them again. And there we are, we're into the programming environment. Okay, And um, what I'll probably do is I'll, I'll do a, a screenshot um, video to show you how this is used. Once the code is written, then it has to be downloaded to the micro bit. And so the download cable here is what's used to get the code onto the micro bit and you'll be able to find out how that's done on my other video. Okay. Traditionally, one of the hardest aspects of a computing program to study to teach is the physical computing. That's the control. And one of the great things about the micro bit is it makes it very easy indeed to do control or physical computing. The micro bit has been designed for that purpose. So if I take my micro bit and I want to then connect some electrical components to it, it's very easy to do. Now in your envelope you will have found, I hope, a number of LEDs, so a red, a yellow and a green LED and also a push switch. Now these are cheap components that can be bought more or less anywhere and you can add to your collection of components if you wish to um, and what we do is when we buy the components we solder on some wires, um, some longer wires and that way it makes connection and use of the components easier. If you've got a parent who's good with a soldering iron, they might do those for you. Okay? Um, LEDs have a positive and a negative leg connection, so we use a red wire to show which is positive and a black wire to show which is negative. When you're connecting an LED to the micro bit, it is important that you get your red wires the right way round. Now, for connecting an LED to use as a light, the black wire goes to the GND, the ground terminal on the micro bit. So this brass strip has a number of terminals, but for primary school work you'll probably only use the ones with the big holes. And the reason they've got big holes is to make it easier to connect. Okay? So the, the black, the negative wire if you like, has to go to ground or negative. Now to connect these, I mean you could just put it through and, and fold it round and you might get a reasonably good connection like that, but it does tend to fall out. So what we use are these. These are crocodile clips, insulated crocodile clips, and it's important that the plug is insulated as well, otherwise you will get short circuiting. And um, a bunch of five like this does nearly everything you need to do, certainly at primary school level. So if we're connecting, I would normally try and use a sort of a, an appropriate colour if I can. So for connecting the black 
negative wire, let's just move those out of the way, connecting the black negative wire to the, to the ground terminal on the micro bit, I'm going to use a black cable. Now the reason that they have this cable tie on is because it's much easier to hand them out at the start of a lesson and when you're collecting in at the end of the lesson all you have to do is count the cable ties and you know you've got your five leads back. You don't have to count up you know, 40 or 50 leads each time. So keep the cable ties on, keep them together, they can be used perfectly well together like that but for handing out and collecting it saves an awful lot of time. So, I've taken my two black cables and I'm going to plug one end of the crock to crock lead on the wire and the other one needs to connect to the ground terminal of the micro bit. Now, connecting them like that isn't terribly secure. Okay? They can move and fall off. Actually, the best way to connect to connect them is to open the jaws and put one jaw through the hole like that. And that way, by connecting them at sort of right angles to the micro bit, it's actually much more secure, much less likely to fall out. Okay, so there's my negative wire connected. And I'm going to use, as it's a red LED, I'm going to use a red wire for my positive also the wire is red, but if you're connecting three or four, or two or three LEDs then obviously you can't use the red wire for all of them. So the red wire goes, one end of the red wire goes there and if this one's going to be controlled by output zero on my micro bit, then the other one goes in zero. Okay, and so it looks a bit like a plate of spaghetti, but the children will get used to this fairly quickly. You can see that if I sort of tease it out, I've got my two crock to crock leads and my micro bit all connected up. Okay, so there it is. Now, if I wanted to connect another LED, I want two LEDs or even three for a set of traffic lights. Um, then, um, if it's a yellow traffic light, I might go for the yellow lead for my positive wire. So the yellow lead goes on there. If these break off, you just use a wire stripper, take a bit more off, and then um, you've got a bit more wire. So that goes on there. And this one's going to be controlled by output zero on my micro bit. So the other end of the red wire, well, the yellow wire in this case, that's gone to my positive goes in there. So you can see we can start building them up. Now, we've got a problem here because the black lead is already in use. So what we can do then is we can take our, our black leads, our negative leads from the red and the yellow, and I tend to do a little half twist like that just to make them more secure. And then we can connect both of them to ground with a black cable. So now, effectively, both our LEDs are connected to ground. And you can put a third one on, and so on. So that's how you would connect LEDs to the micro bit. And if you're following the first steps of the micro bit scheme of work, you'll be doing that when you're making traffic lights. It is very important that the children keep the bare ends of the crocodile clips away from each other because if they touch, they will create a short circuit. So you have to then kind of spread things out. And this is all good science, you know, they should know about short circuits and how you avoid them. So, um, as well as learning some computing and some control, they'll learn about some circuit electricity as well. And a good time to teach physical computing is when you're teaching circuits. One of the great features of the micro bit is it allows teachers and students to take the computer out of computing lessons and put it into other areas of the curriculum. So design and technology, STEM, science, um, it's almost infinite really. And so the connection of components, the physical computing element, is very important in those areas. And the components that we've already seen, these ones that can be bought for about a pound or so each and wired up, 
Um, those are not the only things you can use. If your school already has components that it uses to teach circuit work in science, those are all compatible with the micro bit. I use these really old ones that have been sitting in a cupboard for years and years and years, and they've got a new lease of life. A more modern system that many schools are using are these click circuits, and these are totally compatible with the micro bit as well. Um, you can even, as a sort of design technology project, get the students to make things for themselves. So this is a, a pressure sensor, and this pressure sensor has just been made with some cardboard, bits of aluminium and some wire, and it's all sellotaped together, but it works very well. Um, this pressure pad is actually used in two of the lessons on the scheme of work, and so you'll find out how to make that and use that later. So um, we've looked at how to connect LEDs to the micro bit for output, to output data to make them come on. Um, you have got two input buttons which can be used to input. So if you press the button, something will happen. Um, alternatively, you can connect your input sensor or an input switch to your um, micro bit to make things happen. Okay, Wiring them up is, is very simple. So if I want to have an input switch here, I can connect the switch between the input I'm using, so 0, 1 or 2, and the 3 volt supply. And these crocodile clips can be used for that purpose. So I'm going to connect my 3 volt supply to one side of the switch and using another cable, it doesn't really matter which colour, um, but I'm going to connect my input 0 to the other side of the switch. And now, when I press the switch, I can give an input to the micro bit. So it's a good idea to try and use existing components, if you have them, to build into your projects.